Hi everybody, it's Nicole with Stargazer Soaps. This video is going to be a little different from my other videos. I am combining three soaps into one video. I made three different beer soaps. This first one is a Guinness beer. But what um, you're going to see here pretty soon is I ended up having a problem with these soaps. Um, when I mixed my lye solution into my oils, I didn't realize that my lye was not completely dissolved. So what I ended up with is um, lye pockets. And you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, I just poured the top back into the batter because I realized I had forgotten to add my cream. But this first soap, uh, I can't remember if I already said, but this is a Guinness beer soap. It is a masculine scent. It's fragranced with a spicy sweet blend of French verbena and lemon, green Florentine iris, violet leaves, and a hint of sandalwood. It smells really good. I went with an Irish theme. Since Guinness is an Irish beer, this scent was also, um, it, it was called an Irish fragrance as well. So I thought they would go well together. So for those of you that don't know what rebatching is, what I ended up having to do with all of these soaps is I had to chop them up into little pieces and throw them into a crock pot and cook them. What that does is that neutralizes the lye, it melts it down, so anything that wasn't dissolved is now, and um, basically fixes the problem. The problem is with rebatching is it's very similar to hot processed soap and if you don't know what that is the consistency is very different. The soap that I normally do that you're seeing here is called cold process. It's very liquidy you can, unless it thickens up the way this did but you can usually do designs you can be very very creative with it. It takes longer to cure and this is where my passion is is in the cold process technique. With hot process or rebatching soap, you end up with soap that is much thicker. Um, when I cooked it down, I had to wait until it was an applesauce consistency before I could put it back in the mold. And since I had three batches to do, this was a day-long project. I started around 8 o'clock in the morning and I worked until about midnight. Luckily it was New Year's Eve, so I was up anyway. but a very long process and not something I enjoy. So I'm getting ready to cut the Guinness soap. At this point I didn't notice any issues. I noticed the, the biggest issue I had here was I had what's called a partial gel. Again if you don't soap, gelling happens when the soap heats up as it's curing and this one didn't heat all the way to the outside giving me a, a circle in the middle. It's not a big deal at all. The soap's totally usable. It just affects the um, the color. This next one is a cream porter soap. This one actually came from a local brewery. I live close to Portland so I chose a beer from Portland Brewery. thought it would be fun to do something local. And again it's a cream porter beer. This is also a masculine scent. I'm pulling it up here. It is a woodsy scent with rich oak, sensual sandalwood, and herbs. There are a lot of layers to this scent. It also has lemon, orange, mandarin, bergamot, coriander, sage, rosemary, pepper, sandalwood, oak, and musk. It smells really good. I wasn't impressed with it out of the bottle, but once the soap started to cure, it grew on me very quickly. Just some titanium dioxide there for the top. And you couldn't see, but when I was pouring the beer into my oils, uh, it was a little slushy, which I thought was odd because when I was mixing it, I didn't have any slush left. I freeze my beer and then add my lye to it, and I didn't have any slush so or any graininess. So I assumed that my lye was completely dissolved. I, I had checked it thoroughly and didn't see any problems. 
I normally cook my alcohol out of my beer. I did not for these three soaps, and I think that was the problem. There's been a lot of discussion on Facebook lately to cook the beer or not to cook the beer. And I think for myself, I've discovered simmering the beer first is definitely the way to go. They say that you could lose some of the properties that the, the beer brings to your soap and to your skin. But to me, that is better than running the risk of rubbing, bathing in lye. That's certainly not skin healthy. My poor husband did the zap test for me because I'm too chicken to do that. And what that is is basically you touch your tongue to the soap. And he touched his tongue to a white spot, which you'll see um, in one of the batches here in a minute. And it zapped him. And a zap is like when you touch your tongue to a 9-volt battery. I heard the zap. He dropped the soap and went running. I won't tell you what he said. It's not family friendly. But we knew without a doubt that um, there were lie pockets. This is when I first realized that something was going on. This is, I'm cutting the cream porter soap. The top of the soap was crackly, which was odd. But I didn't take time to inspect it. Had a partial gel on this one too, which after the Guinness I knew that would be the case for this one as well. Didn't really notice anything on the inside, just mostly on the top of that bar or that loaf. It wasn't until I cut this last one that I realized something was really wrong. This last one is a Kona beer soap. This one, when I melted, when I added the lye to my frozen beer, I put it in a hot water bath, hoping that it would resolve any of the slushy issues that I had with the cream porter soap, but it didn't. As I was pouring it into the oils, again, I had slushy left on the bottom of the container. I mixed it very, very thoroughly and didn't feel any grittiness, so again, assumed all of my lye was dissolved, so I wasn't worried about it. I figured as I blended everything up, it would break up the slush and it wouldn't be a problem. But I was wrong. I decided to do a swirl in this one. Be a little creative. And at the last second I realized I needed to add some white for my top. The scent on this soap, also a masculine one, and my favorite one. This one is a clean citrus scent with orange, lemon, spicy notes of clove, pepper, rose, and hints of vanilla, leather, balsam, and musk. Um, I really like the way that this soap smells. And all three of these are very masculine. I do have another beer soap. It's a vanilla beer. That could go either way, men or women. And my husband and I both use it, and we both really like it. So just a drop swirl. This one was the hardest one for me to rebatch because as you'll see when I cut it, it just it was so pretty. And cutting it up really was painful. What I do is cold process soap. I think I may have already talked about this. Um, I'm just sitting here in front of my computer and watching the video and trying to talk, but I do think I spoke, I talked about that already. I have already recorded over this video a little while ago and went to play it back and it didn't actually record, so I'm doing this for a second time. And I can't remember, did I talk about something on the first video or this one? So if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. I got these new spoons. I treated myself right before Christmas. 
I'm not a patient person at all, so using a teaspoon to scoop a layer of soap um, is not efficient enough for me. So these big spoons are pretty awesome. I was excited to use them. The top on the soap uh, was pretty cool too. It really had a lot of definition to it. I was really sad to melt this down. But thankfully I used a lot of extra liquid in these soaps. I added extra beer and extra cream and it really made the process of rebatching much easier. The only thing I had to do is add more fragrance as that cooked out. So this one, the top of this one, was had even more crackles in it than the one before. But look at these swirls. I mean, I was just so happy with them. But if you pay attention, you'll start to see in some of the soaps some white spots. There was one there. And I came back and checked the soaps about an hour after I had cut them, and the white spots were very prominent. And that's when I knew I had. And my suspicions were confirmed. There was a... It was lie, lie pockets. So this is the cream porter beer after my rebatch. You can see it is not as smooth. It's um, a little rough, a little rustic. Oh, I like that. It's rustic. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this soap at all. It's still an awesome, awesome soap. The only difference is um, it's got that rustic look. It's not going to have the color definitions that my cold process swirls do um, and I can use it faster we could this is safe to use now the lye has been completely neutralized completely dissolved there is no cure time cooking the soap eliminates the cure time however I am going to wait a couple of weeks and let this harden some more it was very very moist I was just playing with it before I sat down to do this and it is hardening but I want it to be harder so I'm not going to give you a cure date because I don't know when that's going to be. When I think it's ready, I'll list it. This is the Guinness. So rather than trying to smooth the white out on top, I just literally threw it with my spoon right down the center of the loaves on all three soaps. I wanted to give it a um, foamy appearance. So when all things said and done, I'm pretty happy with how these came out. I mean, they, they could have been just a disaster. The color that you're seeing here in the middle of the Guinness beer is just white from my top that was on my spatula. I kept restirring the white as I was loading the, the dark part of the soap into my mold. Testing my wires here. Last thing I wanted was for a wire to break in the middle of cutting the soap. And the last one, I'm taking it out of the mold, that's why there's a delay. I hadn't intended on cutting these all at the same time until I started and I thought, you know, we'll just go with it. But here's the Kona. And I really was happy with the color of this one. Um, it's kind of a reddish brown color. I thought it was very appropriate. It matches the bottle, which is sitting here next to me. So the cream porter is a light, lighter tannish cream color, and the Guinness is a dark brown. And then we have the reddish brown for the Kona. So I have to say, I mean, this could have been a disaster. I could have ended up having to throw all the soap out, but I was able to save it. It's still the same awesome soap, just made with a little bit of a different technique this time. So there's the Kona, the Guinness, and the Cream Porter. Thanks for watching.